Hello, um, in this class we will uh, look at one of the uh, nano materials uh, that is derived based on uh, carbon and that is the carbon uh, nanotube. Um, it has been around now uh, as a material of uh, interest uh, for uh, um, almost uh, now nearly 25 years uh, maybe and, uh, uh, and people have been studying it and trying to use it for various uh, applications. So, uh, today we will spend some time looking at this material trying to understand uh, certain aspects associated with it. In particular, we will uh, look at, uh, uh, we will explain some nomenclature. I will look at some nomenclature that is used with respect to uh, carbon uh, nanotubes because uh, if you uh, read uh, publications in, in the area of carbon nanotubes, you will tend to see this uh, nomenclature. So, we will explain, uh, we will look at that and I will try to explain what that nomenclature is and how it comes about. Uh, we will also derive some uh, important uh, parameters of the nanotube, uh, particularly its diameter and also how it is twisted, things like that uh, based on the nomenclature used. So, this is the uh, idea that we will uh, uh, look at this class and this, this is the set of learning objectives that we have for the class. So, to begin with, uh, we will start by you know a small rough diagram of what the nanotube is and uh, we, uh, I will show you what is it that we are going to do to put some numbers to this description. So, the general description is that it is like a tube. So, you have a cylinder and then, so this is like the you know uh, if you have the tube and you take a section like this, this is what you would see. You would see a cylinder and then you would see some two end caps. So, uh, so this is what uh, you are seeing, it is a cylinder with the two end caps uh, and I have taken a vertical section. So, uh, you are a sort of uh, a cylinder that is lying flat on a surface and then I have taken a vertical section. So, you see a cross section that uh, uh, looks like this. Uh, now, we want to use, uh, we want to say certain things about it. We want to say something about its diameter, we want to say something about uh, 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 how the carbon atoms are sort of lined up with respect to each other and so on. So, to do that, uh, one of the ways in which we can do it is to first start with a single graphene sheet, okay. So, single sheet of graphene and then fold it to create this carbon nanotube. So, I must point out that in the general synthesis of carbon nanotubes, this is not the process that is actually used. Uh, we do not start with graphene sheets and then fold them to get the carbon nanotube uh, in the actual typical experimental synthesis process that is used in the labs. Uh, instead, we use certain processes that we will describe in a later class, uh, which helps us create the nanotube or synthesize the nanotube as is. So, you get the nanotube in its final form. Uh, so, uh, this is not how it is made, but this description, if you look at it as a sheet that has been rolled to create the nanotube, then you are better able to understand how the structure of that sheet relates to the structure of the nanotube, right. So, that is what we do. So, so if you take this tube for example, and you let us say you cut off the hemispherical ends. So, then you will have a hollow tube. So, you will have a tube like that. Simply a hollow tube. Okay, so, you have a hollow tube uh, uh, like that and then you can cut this tube and open it up. So, so supposing I cut it like this. So, I snip it like that and then I uh, open it up uh, into a sheet, then I would get a sheet like that. Okay. So, I started with a tube, I cut off its uh, 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 the end caps, then I arrived at a hollow tube and then I uh, cut open that hollow tube and got a sheet. So, uh, this is the manner in which uh, I am explaining the uh, uh, arrangement of the tube. Uh, uh, I mean and how it relates to the sheet. So, in reality we could do the opposite. So, in fact that is what we are going to do in the class. We are going to take the sheet which is the graphene sheet graphene sheet and then roll it to get the tube. So, that is how you would get this tube and then later we will look at the end caps. We are not going to look at the end caps immediately today, but we later look at how those end caps might come about. So, uh, but you can see how the graphene sheet when it is rolled will get you a tube and uh, in this process we can understand how that rolling happened and how that uh, uh, tube came about 
and how you can relate some things uh, with the uh, that relate to the structure of the graphene sheet uh, to the structure of the tube. So, for example, uh, I am now going to explain the same thing with a sheet of uh, paper which we will uh, pretend for the moment is a graphene sheet. So, this is a sheet of paper uh, we pretend that this is a, a graphene sheet uh, like the one that you see on the right extreme of your screen and then you can see that I can actually roll it around. And once I am done rolling it around I get a cylinder right. So, I get a cylinder a hollow cylinder is what I have right. So, I can start with a sheet roll it around get a cylinder. Now, the interesting thing to note is that uh, when I say how the uh, when I make a mention of how the uh, uh, arrangement of atoms in the sheet relates to the tube what I mean is uh, although I have just rolled this to get you the tube there is uh, we have actually uh, a few different options on how you can roll this to get the tube. So, this is one way in which you can get the tube I can also twist the sheet when I roll it. So, in other words I would twist it like this right. So, I twist it like this and I can still get a tube right. So, I, I have now twisted it. So, I am still getting a tube, but it is not the same as the tube that we started with. So, this tube is not the same as what uh, what I previously showed you. So, this is a twisted tube. So, you can see here clearly it is a twisted tube let me hold it correctly for you and show you. So, this is like a twisted tube. So, I can do it like this or I could do it like this right. So, I can give it a twist. So, this is called chirality. Uh, and uh, so, this is one of the things that we want to understand about the nanotube we want to know whether the nanotube got formed like this or it got formed like that. So, uh, and the reason we want to know it is uh, it tells us something about the structural aspects of the nanotube it also actually impacts very significantly on the properties of the nanotube uh, things like conductivity of the nanotube are often associated with uh, aspects of how it has been twisted ok. So, so this is very uh, important. So, knowing what the chirality of the nanotube is uh, and putting some uh, you know some kind of a number to it uh, some kind of uh, uh, numerical value to it uh, gives us a better way of describing the nanotube and a better way of understanding what the nanotube is capable of ok. So, that therefore, we are going to spend some time uh, we are going to spend some time uh, figuring out how this uh, structure relates to uh, the nanotube. So, what you see here is a graphene sheet ok. So, we will spend a few moments on this we are going to derive things based on this. So, so what you see here are uh, so for example, this is all hexagonally bonded carbon atoms the whole sheet consists of hexagonally bonded carbon atoms. So, I have just highlighted one of them all right. So, now uh, as I said one way to look at it uh, look at a nanotube is to roll uh, take a sheet like this and roll it around and form a tube. So, now we want to get a little bit more specific on what have we done while we rolled it ok. So, so uh, what we are saying is let us look at two different hexagons let us look at two different hexagons here. So, one hexagon is here and another hexagon is here. Okay. And I identify two points this is O and this is A. Now, the idea of saying I know how I rolled it is basically translated to this sheet to say that when I roll it I get the point A to coincide with the point O. So, we roll such that point A coincides with point O So, therefore, now we have a much more specific way in which I specify that I have rolled the sheet. In other words if you also take a sheet you have a separate graphene sheet and I have a separate graphene sheet and if we, if we are able to specify O and A like this and then uh, and then rot, uh, roll the sheet such that O coincides with A or A coincides with O then the two tubes that we will get will be identical. The tube that you get and the tube that I get will have the same kind of twist and therefore, many of the properties will start getting defined uh, appropriately ok. So, so this is the idea. So, now uh, with respect to the graphene sheet uh, there are two directions that are defined 
uh, from the perspective of symmetry uh, between these two directions we have a range of possibilities and then outside of these two directions whatever you see by symmetry is the same as what you would see within these two directions. So, what are these two directions? One direction is referred to as the zigzag direction. Okay. So, one direction is referred to as the zigzag direction. So, for example, you see this, uh, th this line marked here. this is the zigzag direction. So, as you can see it is easy to uh, visualize it with respect to the graphene sheet structure because basically you just see this uh, if you go along the direction you see the zigzag pattern right you see the zigzag pattern it goes zigzag zigzag like that. So, therefore, you can visualize this direction uh, as zigzag direction. So, when I say zigzag direction you can quickly understand uh, what exactly I am referring to. There is another direction which is in this direction here. this dotted line that I am drawing. This has uh, an another descriptive uh, way of uh, being uh, referred to and that is called the armchair direction. Okay. So, so the first one that I wrote there is the zigzag direction. And the second one that I have drawn here is the armchair direction. So, this is some uh, general descriptive term that has been uh, uh, used in the literature and why do we call it armchair and well again there is no uh, you know it is not a very scientific way of uh, putting a descriptive uh, name to uh, this uh, particular direction. But generally if you look at it if you consider this as the base of the chair and these as the two arms of the chair you know as such that you know, let us say you are going to be sitting sitting on this uh, place here uh, like that. Uh, so, then uh, you can loosely say that this is uh, described as an armchair and then uh, this, uh, this direction is then the armchair direction. So, these, these two would be considered the arms of the chairs and that is the chair. So, uh, well you can argue that that is not a very great description, but that is the description that is used in the literature and therefore, that is the armchair direction. So, this direction this dotted line that I have drawn here is the armchair direction. So, uh, what I have drawn here O A, so the vector O A if you say O is the origin and A is another point there on this uh, lattice O A is a vector. Uh, this vector is somewhere between the zigzag direction and the armchair direction okay. and we have a choice a range of uh, uh, vectors like this that we can select which all go between the armchair direction and the zigzag direction. And as I said because of symmetry if you go beyond this on either side you are essentially repeating the same thing. So, therefore, uh, it is sufficient that we look at the structure within the scope of the zigzag direction and the armchair direction. So, now uh, we are basically saying that we have rolled the sheet so that A coincides with O. Okay. So, now uh, what we do is uh, we specify a few things here. Uh, we say that the angle that the vector O A makes with the zigzag uh, direction is this angle theta. So, this theta is an angle that the vector O A makes with the zigzag direction okay. and uh, we have uh, the x and y directions uh, indicated here x and y directions. So, we will use unit vectors in the x direction x cap and unit vector the y direction y cap to help us in some of these calculations. Okay. So, uh, we can also see here I will put a vector here a 1 and a 2 these are the unit vectors of the graphene sheet. So, a 1 and a 2 um, and therefore, we can think of O a as uh, it is called the chiral vector. So, it is called the chiral vector ok. So, the chiral vector c h. So, I will put the vector symbol here is the vector O a. So, the vector O a is the chiral vector c h. So, it is n times a 1 plus m times a 2. So, where n and m are uh, integers. So, for example, if you look at what do we what do we mean by this? We have a 1 direction here marked uh, marked like this. You will notice that the a 1 direction is exactly the same direction as the zigzag direction right. So, the zigzag direction and the a 1 direction coincide right. So, when I say n times a 1 and m times a 2, a 2 is this direction. So, we have to now have some uh, combination of a 1 
plus a2 which should get us to uh, go from uh, starting from o to arrive at a. So, if you look at it here I have to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, I have to uh, travel 5 steps along the a1 direction and I have to travel 2 steps along the a2 direction to arrive at a right. So, I have to travel 5 steps in the a1 direction, 2 steps in the a2 direction to arrive at a. So, therefore, O a in this context is 5 times a1 plus 2 times a2. So, in the context of this uh, description we are able to show that O a O a is 5 times a1 plus 2 times a2. So, in this case n and m would be 5 and 2. Any other selection that you make you will have a different value of n and different value of m. So, that is the way in which so almost all the tubes the basically the tubes that you can generate using this sheet can all be described in terms of n and m. If you know what the n value is and what the m value is you start uh, you will have a very uh, good idea of what is the tube that you have created and then from that we can uh, ascribe properties to the tube. So, this is what we will do we will uh, figure out some more properties of the tube based on the values of n and the value of m. Okay. So, that is what our uh, uh, derivation in the rest of the class is going to be. So, now uh, I have just magnified uh, this uh, a 1 and a 2 vector. So, a 1 is here and a 2 I mean sorry a 2 is there and a 1 is here and we have a unit vector in the x direction which is x cap and unit vector in the y direction which is y cap ok. So, uh, uh, so this is basically uh, you have uh, 2 hexagons uh, here. So, this angle is 120, this is also 120 and so is this. So, these 3 angles are uh, 120 degrees. So, uh, if, you, uh, if you see here if you, if you draw uh, so, if this is 120 degrees uh, angle. So, then you have uh, 60 degrees remaining. So, this is uh, 30 degrees and this is 30 degrees right. So, that is uh, those are the angles uh, of the triangle. So, now let us see if you want to write uh, a 1 in terms of unit vectors in the x direction and the y direction. So, let us just see what that is. So, to do that I have to just draw the extend it and draw like that and, uh, and also draw it like this for a 2. So, what do we have here? We have 30 degrees here. So, uh, if you see here if, if I write a 1 modulus of a 1 equals the modulus of a 2 equals some uh, numerical value a, then uh, we have a 1 is equal to uh, a uh, cos 30 which is root 3 by 2 in the x direction plus a sin 30 which is half. So, a by 2 in the y direction. Okay, so, uh, a 1 is uh, a root 3 by 2 x cap and uh, plus a by 2 y cap. So, that is so that uh, so you will have a root 3 by 2 x cap will bring you from here from the origin to this point let us say uh, I will call it b o b is uh, o b will move us in the uh, uh, x direction which is a root 3 by 2 into uh, x cap and then if I have to go from b to this point c then I have to do a by 2 y. So, in the y direction y cap direction. So, this is a by 2 y cap you will note that this is also a by 2 y cap and uh, the uh, and therefore, uh, but except that this is in the negative direction. So, this is now we are talking of vector. So, we, this is in the negative direction. So, if you write a 2 in the x direction you travel the same distance a root 3 by 2 x cap but now in the y direction you are going in the opposite way like this as opposed to previously you went upwards now you are going downwards. So, this is minus a by 2 y cap ok. So, this is uh, the way we write a 1 and a 2 and incidentally uh, these two uh, if you just see uh, I have also written here that it is equal to root 3 a c c. So, why does that come about a c c is this bond length. So, from uh, uh, from here to here for example, this is a c c and that is the same for all sides of the hexagon. So, all sides of the hexagon is uh, equal to a c c. So, that is the same as th this uh, uh, distance uh, marked here from here to here is a c c. So, uh, if you look at it if you want to again uh, look at uh, uh, make draw a perpendicular bisector to that line it will come here right. So, this is 30 degrees. So, uh, whatever is the a c c uh, times cos 30 which is root 3 by 2 is equal to half of. So, because you have taken a perpendicular bisector here. 
So, this distance here is only half the value of a equal to half of a. Therefore, uh, a is equal to root 3 a c c and that is what I have put here. Okay, so, this is how they relate to each other and as necessary we will uh, take this value and put it. So, now uh, if you go back to what we had for the uh, uh, chiral vector, we wrote uh, the chiral vector equals n a 1 plus m a 2 right. So, we will write c h equals n times a 1 plus m times a 2. Now, we already have uh, expression for a 1 and we have an expression for a 2. So, we can substitute in this uh, chiral uh, vector uh, notation and what will we have? We will have c h equals n a root 3 by 2 uh, x cap plus n a by 2 y cap plus now. So, that covers our a 1 a 1 term a 1 term is covered. Now, we look at the a 2 term here that is m. So, m a root 3 by 2 x cap. So, because now we are going to do a 2 we have to take the second equation here. So, this, this equation we have to take and multiply it by m and so minus m a by 2 y cap. So, now if we uh, club together the uh, uh, terms in the x direction and terms in the y direction. So, after we club them together you will basically have n a root 3 by 2 plus m a root 3 by 2 x cap uh, plus n a by 2 minus m a by 2 y cap. So, this is our uh, chiral vector right. So, in terms of uh, uh, in the uh, taking some vectors in the x direction and the y direction unit vectors in the x direction and unit vector in the y direction clubbing the terms together for a 1 and a 2 you arrive at uh, this value for the uh, chiral vector. So, uh, having uh, done that, uh, so this is what we have done here. So, you can see the same thing that I put in the previous slide is what I have put down here. So, you can see this equation, uh, this equation here and this second equation out here. Those are the two equations that we have here. Of course, we put the vector uh, symbol here. So, this is x cap, y cap, x cap, y cap. So, so therefore, we get uh, this thing and we put this uh, CH uh, uh, equation also down uh, which we had here. So, CH n a 1 plus m a 2 equals n a root 3 by 2 plus m a root 3 by 2 x cap plus uh, n a by 2 minus m a by 2 y cap. So, we got uh, uh, the uh, uh, expression for the chiral vector. Now, having got the chiral vector, we would like to find two other parameters associated with the uh, uh, with the uh, uh, nanotube. So, what are the two parameters? We would like to understand uh, what is the diameter of the tube in terms of n and m. So, in terms of n and m, what is the diameter of the tube? So, that is one thing that we would like to derive. The other thing is in terms of n and m, we would like to understand what is the degree to which we have twisted the tube. So, as I told you, you can join it like this or you can join it like that. So, that twist, that chiral angle, it is called the chiral angle theta. So, we would like to understand what is that value theta in terms of n and m and we also want to understand what is the value of uh, the diameter of the tube in terms of n and m. So, again if you look at it, if you go back to uh, how we had put this uh, image together, uh, you can see here that once you fold, so if you take the, if I say that uh, I am going to uh, roll the tube such that O and A coincide. Okay, so, then what is the meaning of that? The meaning of that is the line that goes from O to A is the circumference of the tube. right? So, if I have taken a point uh, O, uh, I mean a point O here and a point A here and I roll it such that that O coincides with A. right? So, I have got O to coincide with A as I form the tube. Then the uh, O A vector the O A vector basically goes from here, goes all the way around and comes back here. right? So, that is what that uh, O A vector is. So, therefore, the chiral vector uh, or, or rather the 
magnitude of the chiral vector is essentially the circumference of the tube. Okay, so, a magnitude of the chiral vector is the circumference of the tube and if you look at any uh, and since the tube is circular in uh, uh, geometry, uh, if you take the uh, diameter of the tube to be d, then pi d is the uh, uh, magnitude of the circumference. So, therefore, essentially we are saying that the magnitude of the chiral vector equals pi times diameter of the nanotube. Right. So, now we see that we have suddenly uh, we were looking at vector on a flat sheet of paper, we rolled it up to get the tube and uh, now we are able to relate the diameter of the tube to the uh, magnitude of the vector when it was a flat sheet. Okay. We have al also got uh, an expression for the chiral vector as it is, so we can use that to complete this calculation. So, that is exactly what we will do now. So, we have um, CH equals uh, root 3 by 2 n a uh, plus root 3 by 2 m a x plus n by 2 a minus m by 2 a y cap. So, now what is the uh, modulus of c h? It is simply uh, the uh, square root of a square plus b square that is basically the modulus. So, if the square root of this term a uh, square root of the square of this term plus the square of this term right. So, this is equal to simply the square root of uh, the square of this term plus the square of that term. So, if you take the square of this term the first term. So, you will get uh, 3 by 4 n square a square plus 3 by 4 m square a square plus 2 uh, into uh, 3 by 4 uh, n m a square that is the uh, first term that we have okay. and then if you extend this further plus the square of this second term that we have here the square of the second term that we have here. So, that is n square by 4 a square plus m square by 4 a square plus uh, okay, minus 2 n m by 4 a square. So, this is the square of all the terms in this second part and this is the square of all the terms in the first part of this part. Okay, so, so, this is what we have. So, now we simply simp uh, just simplify this and see what we have. So, we have n square a square here. So, we have an n square a square, uh, a square term here and uh, you also have an n square a square term here. So, this is 3 by 4 n square a square that is plus 1 by 4 n square a square. So, that is n square a square. So, this is square root of n square a square plus similarly you have a 3 by 4 m square a square here and a plus 1 by 4 m square a square here. So, if you add them you have m square a square. Then we have uh, 2 times 3 by 4 n m a square uh, uh, minus 2 times n m by 4 a square. So, if you just uh, uh, simplify that that is plus 2 into 3 by 4 minus 1 by 4 which is uh, 1 by 2 n m and the whole thing is multiplied by a square. Right. So, therefore, if you simplify this further you will simply have if you, you can pull out the a square and then uh, it is uh, square root of a square. So, it is a. So, this is simply a into square root of n square plus m square uh, plus n m is that right 2 3 by 4 minus 1 by 4 uh, will get you half. So, you will have n m. So, this is what you will get a squ n square plus n square plus n m. So, uh, a is uh, out here and we also see that a is equal to root 3 a c c. So, you can also write this as a c c into 3 times n square plus m square plus n m. So, you can either write it using a or uh, a that I have put here or you can write it using a c c. 
So, this is the uh, modulus of uh, the chiral vector and this is equal to pi d right. So, therefore, uh, so we can write that here again pi d equals uh, you have uh, a into 3 of n square plus m square plus n m ok. Therefore, the diameter d of the uh, nanotube relates to the values of n and m as I am, I am sorry this is a a c c here. So, a c c square root of 3 into n square plus m square plus n m divided by pi. So, therefore, we find that we can actually uh, start with n and m values. So, if you see here you will see that uh, uh, down here as well we will again come to that in just a moment, but you can see that uh, we have started with uh, looking at the diameter of the tube, we looked at how the diameter of the tube uh, of course, because it is a tube the it has a circular uh, you know cross section and therefore, uh, pi times the diameter of the tube is that circumference and we also saw the way we defined the tube, the way we created the tube so to speak uh, conceptually was to take the circumference and roll it and that circumference there was the chiral vector C h or O a in this case and therefore, we equated the magnitude of the chiral vector to the uh, uh, you know the uh, diameter of that uh, uh, to pi times the diameter of that uh, tube and then we did the uh, uh, mathematics and simplified it to see how you could go from the chiral vector uh, and relate it to pi d and then arrive at a value for d in terms of n and m uh, because the chiral vector itself was described in terms of n and m. So, this is what we got and that is what you see in your next slide. You can see we, we did all this we wrote the chiral vector. So, I will put that down here. So, this is the modulus of a 1 modulus of a 2 is a and that is how they relate and the uh, chiral vector c h is n times a 1 plus m times a 2 uh, and that is how uh, since we know what is uh, a 1 and a 2 in terms of a and uh, n and m uh, we arrive at uh, these values uh, for uh, the chiral vector and then once you take the modulus of the chiral vector and equate it to pi d we arrive at this equation here which is what we did just a moment ago. Uh, on how the diameter of the nanotube relates to the values of n and m which then design uh, which are based on again how the tube has been created in terms of a twist in the carbon nanotube ok. So, uh, therefore, the n and m are very useful in uh, telling us uh, what the diameter of the tube is. So, what we will do now is uh, uh, this is one part of it uh, we would also like to see if you go back uh, the other parameter that we want to get a handle of. So, we have now understood how O a how the value O a uh, gives us the uh, uh, diameter d. We are also interested in this theta value the chiral angle. So, uh, chiral vector and chiral angle are two important uh, parameters of a nanotube. We saw the chiral vector now C h and we did certain calculations with respect to C h. We would also like to do some calculations to get ourselves a value of theta based on uh, what the, uh, 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 the uh, chiral vector is. So, if you see here uh, if you uh, look at what uh, we are dealing with here uh, if you take that a 1 vector here a 1 vector here which is what is this vector here a 1 right. If you take a dot product of a 1 and the chiral vector c h if you take a dot product of those two then that is simply the magnitude of a 1 uh, into the magnitude of the chiral vector uh, multiplied by cos of the angle between them right. So, the dot product of a 1 and, and, and that cos of the angle that angle is this chiral angle, the angle is the chiral angle. So, uh, a dot product of the uh, a 1 vector with the uh, chiral vector is simply the modulus of a 1 times the modulus of the chiral vector times uh, cos of the angle theta between them which happens to be the chiral angle. So, that is the approach we will use, we will use that equation uh, and simplify that equation to arrive at the uh, angle theta. So, that is what we will do. So, if we go back uh, we will go to a place where we can do that for ourselves. So, the angle theta. So, what is the angle theta? We are basically saying uh, if you take the chiral vector c h uh, I will remove this and you dot do a dot product with a 1 
the vector a 1 this is equal to modulus of c h into modulus of a 1 uh, into cos of the angle theta between them right. So, we will use this process to arrive at uh, our result. So, what is the chiral vector here? The chiral vector c h uh, is uh, n a root 3 by 2 x cap plus m a uh, root 3 by 2 uh, also x cap plus uh, n a by 2 y cap minus m a by 2 y cap. This is the uh, chiral vector and uh, the uh, vector a 1 uh, itself we have de uh, derived uh, defined it here. So, if you go back here you can see how we have defined the vector a 1 uh, it is defined here right. So, we will use the same uh, definition uh, in, in our uh, activity here. So, we will do a dot product of root 3 by 2 x cap plus uh, I mean a root 3 a by root 3 a by 2 then uh, and a by 2 y cap. So, this is our uh, uh, dot product. So, now uh, we simply have to do uh, you know uh, complete this uh, uh, math. So, what, uh, what do we have here? Uh, you will see that uh, if you take this term here and you do a dot product with this term here uh, and correspondingly you take this term here and you do a dot product with this term here right. So, uh, we will have um, let us see if you have some space here to do that. So, uh, you will basically have uh, okay. So, you take root 3 uh, uh, a by uh, 2 and you do this you will have n uh, a square by 4. 3 n a square by 4. So, that is what you get 3 n uh, n a root 3 by 2 root 3 by 2 3 a square uh, 3 a square by 4 um, x cap will go plus uh, 3 m a square by 4. So, we will have uh, 3 n a square uh, by 4 plus uh, 3 m a square by 4 plus n a square by 4 minus m a square by 4. So, this is what we will have uh, when once we get done uh, multiplying these terms. So, you will have uh, n a square uh, n a square is what you will have here minus m a square by 2. So, this is what we get as uh, the uh, dot product of c h and uh, a 1 uh, and this we are going to equate to the modulus of c h uh, times the modulus of a 1 times cos theta right. So, this is uh, what uh, we are uh, uh, planning to do and if you see here the modulus of a 1 and a 2 is itself a. So, it is simply the value a is what the modulus is. Uh, so, that uh, so this uh, this part is already known here this is the modulus uh, of uh, a and this is equal to a. So, we only need this modulus of c h. So, to get the modulus of c h uh, we simply have to look at what we have here. Uh, we see that the c h is this uh, term that we have got uh, out here. Uh, the c h uh, modulus of c h we have already calculated here uh, this is that this is the value that we got uh, out here. This is the value of uh, c, uh, modulus of uh, uh, c h. So, this term also we have uh, modulus of c h we have. So, therefore, if you go back to this uh, equation we have here uh, th this part that we have here is simply uh, a into root of n square plus m square plus n m into a into cos theta. So, this is a square into square root of n square plus m square plus n m cos theta. So, that is the uh, right hand side of this equation this this term here is exactly what this term here is and then we also found the left hand side of this equation is here. So, we are only simply equating these. So, uh, you are going to have uh, so this is equal to n minus m by 2 or 2 n uh, minus I am sorry this will be a plus here 
yeah. So, n, n a square plus m a square by 2. So, 2 n plus m uh, by 2 uh, is what uh, into a square is what this uh, uh, equation is and then uh, this, this is equal to the term above. So, this is the left hand side uh, left hand side of this equation here and what you see here is the right hand side of this equation. So, these two are equal. So, now if you equate these two you can get uh, cos theta very easily and so therefore, uh, we will see that in our next slide we are simply going to write here uh, we are going to write uh, a square into square root of n square plus m square plus n m is equal to uh, if you go back to the previous slide you would see the uh, into cos theta. is equal to 2 n plus m by 2 a square. So, this is what we have. So, now we, we just have to simplify this you cancel the a square and a square therefore, cos theta uh, is simply uh, 2 n plus m by 2 into square root of n square plus m square plus n m. Okay. So, this is the expression that we are getting here. Okay. So, cos theta is what we have here is in the numerator 2 n plus m uh, divided by 2 into square root of n square plus m square plus n m. Okay. So, so, this is how we have got this uh, equation. So, now you see that uh, the theta value which is basically the chiral angle here. Uh, cos theta uh, is also related to the values of n and m. So, once you know the values of n and m uh, you can actually tell something about the theta uh, associated with this uh, um, uh, the uh, nanotube you can also say something about its diameter. So, both these uh, important things the diameter d and chiral angle theta both of these uh, we are able to associate with the values of n and m. We are just doing some little bit of mathematics uh, and uh, you know uh, calculating out a 1 dot uh, c h and then equating it to the modulus of a 1 times the modulus of c h uh, times cos theta. So, once you do that uh, you get this uh, uh, equation. So, uh, therefore, you can uh, get all these parameters of the nanotube uh, from n and m values. And, and that really is the uh, primary uh, idea that I wanted to uh, uh, discuss and elaborate upon in this class. So, if you look at uh, what we uh, see here as our major conclusions, uh, there is a notation n and m that is used to describe uh, different types of carbon nanotubes. So, uh, uh, we will see here that you know there are carbon nanotubes that are uh, referred to as zigzag carbon nanotubes, there are other carbon nanotubes that are referred to as armchair nanotubes and there are carbon uh, nanotubes which are uh, ref referred to as chiral nanotubes. Uh, it is all got to do with that angle of chirality uh, we will see that uh, in our subsequent class. So, the angle of chirality decides whether it is a zigzag nanotube, uh, armchair nanotube or a chiral nanotube and therefore, this n and m is uh, very useful in uh, uh, describing that and when n and m are not equal the nanotube is uh, chiral uh, or there are some specific uh, um, values uh, that the uh, uh, or at least especially if it is uh, uh, you know uh, if m is not equal to 0 and then you have a range of values for m which are not equal to the value of n then it is uh, referred to as a chiral nanotube and the values of n and m can be related to the chiral angle uh, of the nanotube and the values of n and m can also be related to the tube diameter. So, therefore, in the uh, context of uh, uh, describing nanotubes uh, if, if you use this description using the value of n and m uh, you can actually tell a lot of things about the nanotube. It turns out that based on the values of n and m uh, things like electronic properties of the nanotube uh, uh, get fixed or at least uh, they tend to be a certain type uh, and therefore, it is very important it is not simply a structurally uh, uh, descriptive uh, approach which itself would be very useful given that it is a tube and you are trying to explain something about it, the way in which the tube has been put together. Uh, so, that itself would be anyway useful, 
uh, in this case it also reflects very specifically with respect to the properties of the tube and therefore uh, that is uh, very important um, and uh, therefore this description is used. And uh, we will see all those uh, descriptions and how it re uh, relates to uh, the properties in our uh, subsequent class. Okay. So, with this we will halt for today, thank you.